that. Um, when I leave. Turns out I'm the only senior this year. We lost like 90% of our cabinet last year because uh, they were all seniors. So maybe I knew them. Uh, we set up on camera and stuff? I mean, we are recording the faces, but like. That's totally fine. I'd prefer not to. Is it still, is it still this shitty microphone? Yup. Nice. I'm just going to put it up here. <clears throat> is it recording? We good? It is recording. Sweet. All right. Squarely 15 minutes into our time slot, we'll go ahead and get started. Reiterating, please join the Discord if anybody hasn't already. That's going to be where we post uh, everything from meeting updates to CTF agendas to CDC information, everything in between. So, cool. Let's get off this slide. Leap hacking and beyond. We're going to go around and do some real quick uh, cabinet intros, just so you guys know who is kind of in charge around here. If you have any questions in the Discord, we all have different roles and we should be able to stand out from everybody else in the Discord, so you can always add us or DM us or whatever. So, uh, Hello, my name is President Ice Bear uh, in the Discord. I'm El Presidente. Uh, Ice Bear, actual name David Wolf. I'm a senior here at Iowa State in Cybersecurity Engineering. Um, I have seen and met a lot of you people from random shit, so that weird food thing on the other side of Coover earlier in the week, to Clubfest uh, on Wednesday, to all the labs that I'm TAing this semester. So it's really good to see all of you showing up and hanging out. Um, I think that's pretty much all we need to do. Okay. I'm Trent Wallraven. I'm the Vice President and Treasurer. Uh, I go by TWBox Box in the Discord. Uh, my name's there. I think if you're looking on the Discord, I think Vice President is up there, probably. Um, I'm a junior this year. I've taken 230 and 231. Feel free to ask questions. I know I'm not a TA. I will gladly help. I can give information to TAs cannot. Um, that's true. I don't know. I think that's anything interesting about me. Sure. Zach. I'm Zach. I'm um, the CDF captain. I'm a junior in cybersecurity. I've uh, taken 230 and 231. So, thanks. Trent. Sweet. Uh, Tyler. I'm Tyler Orman. Um, I'm the equipment person. So, if you want to rent anything, let me know. Yeah, and we're working on getting more equipment stuff. So for people that have been talking about uh, rubber duckies in the Discord, or Raspberry Pis, or Picos, or anything like that, we're looking at putting together orders for this semester to kind of stock up on hardware, because we think one of the big benefits of this club is we have money from sponsors, and we want to use that to give you guys a chance to play with some of the cool hardware hacking stuff that's otherwise like kind of expensive and silly to buy just for like dicking around with it. So um, Tyler's going to be a good contact for that. Uh, what's your Discord, Tyler? Tyler. It's Tyler. There we go. It's so easy. It's amazing. <coughs> Love it. James. Oh, yeah. What's going I'm on? I'm James. I'm the OnlyFans and YouTube manager. We're still getting OnlyFans up and running, <laughs> and I'm still getting transfer over from Trent, who was the manager last year. Uh, I'm Ice Dragon Wizard in the Discord, and right now I'm taking 230 with a lad TA by the amazing David Wolf. <laughs> so I'm right there with a lot of you, even though I might not be able to help. <laughs> Wait, there we go. Uh, William. Hi, I'm William. My Discord is also William. Um, Easy. I'm a computer science major, the best major here. That's right. I have a cyber um, minor. Um, so I'm also taking 230 and 231. Um, and I'm the web admin. So I have a website. We have a really cool website. I'm working on making it not look like some of the, um, the 2000s. But it's a work in progress. So <laughs> If there's anybody from Ice Age here, Please fix yeah. our website. And if anyone is from Ice Age, <laughs> please unbrick it. <laughs> please put our um, domain up. Because <laughs> right now we're using a GitHub domain. And so yeah, we had to change a lot of posters and stuff because there's a Ice Age broke our DNS stuff. So whatever, but it's sweet. Not, like, DNS is always an issue. Yeah, Still it's already at two thirty. It's always the issue. Uh, yeah, and where was Cole? Is he here? He is not here. He was he here, the bastard. He okay. Was. Yeah, uh, I, I literally I walked in with him, so I was kind of surprised. But Cole has, uh, has he has a lab. Yep, he's got something conflicting with this, um, so he most likely won't be at many of the meetings. But he's technically our social chair. Um, he's also just a paint bucket in Discord uh, with the name Paint. So if anybody needs to reach him about printing flyers or something else social related, he's your man. So sweet. That's pretty much it. We're pretty late back club, so these are more or less meaningless titles. We all do a little bit of everything, so if you can't figure out who might be responsible for something specific that you want to talk about, just hit any of us and we'll be able to figure it out. All right. I wanted to answer a pretty important question off the bat. Why does this club exist? Why is IASG here? Who is information assurance? And why are they a student? And why are they grouping? Um, 
basically, the way that I'm looking at it for this semester or this whole year of the club actually is I want to lower the barrier of entry as much as possible for a lot of the cyber stuff that happens here on campus. So um, we do a really good job here of just having conversations, having you know, really open discussions about any topic in cyber. Um, I know I talked to a lot of people at Clubfest about this, but we do, like cybersecurity is like a crazy big field. There's so much stuff encapsulated in it and we try to do a little bit of everything. And if there's something that we don't do, we definitely want to learn about it and get into it. So we're comfortable learning with you guys as well. Um, we do, we'll cover, you know, we'll have presentations over network hacking and how to attack, uh, you know, active directory systems, which is a super common thing in like professional pen testing, if that's your bag. Um, we'll do talks on log aggregation and IDS setups for intrusion detection, more blue team stuff if you're looking to get into that. We help organize CTFs and CDCs, which we'll talk about later. Um, yeah, there's like a whole bunch of stuff. We'll do physical security. So we have people come in and talk about their adventures breaking into banks, legally of course, and getting paid for it and how you can do that. And so we'll talk about, I know there was a demo at the Clubfest booth about lock picking. We do a whole night on lock picking, whole bunch of stuff. So. We're trying to make sure that everybody can come in with no experience at all, and we'll work you up to being um, able to talk about any of this stuff in interviews, hang out, just have these conversations, learn some of the lingo and the buzzwords that get thrown around so that you can sound uh, at least like you know what you're doing uh, in those interviews, which is like 90% of the battle. Um, interest company is the other huge point that we're focusing on for the semester. So um, I already have two companies scheduled for talks throughout the semester um, in two weeks. Not next week, but the week after that, we have Microsoft, an incident response uh, engineer coming in from Microsoft. So James, do you have anything to say about that or you know him? Uh, so he's a family friend of mine. His name is Chris Kirk, just like Captain Kirk, spelled that way. <laughs> um, he is on the defense and response team, basically travels the world for Microsoft whenever you hear about a major incident, uh, like solar winds. He was actually there on the front lines trying to fix things in a bunch of different countries. And it's really fun hearing different stories, like how he's not allowed in certain countries, um, and how his friend has a uh, kill on site in Russia. So I think that he will be able to tell a couple of those stories, of course a little bit more anonymized, because uh, it's still client information that they don't exactly want out most of the time. Yeah, so I'm actually super excited for that. It's been a long time since we got Microsoft in here to talk about anything, so um, yeah, that's coming up in two weeks. Um, I just talked to my previous manager at RSM, who's a general consulting firm out of Des Moines. Um, he's the manager of their pen testing team down there in Red Team, so they're going to be coming in and talking about what it takes to be an actual uh, real life pen tester, more on the offensive side of security. That's going to be a little later in the semester. We're working on getting PwC, um, Mandiant, Collins Aerospace. These are all companies that we've talked to in the past and usually don't have a problem coming in for talks. So uh, the general flow for those, they're going to give us, they're going to buy us pizza so we don't have to pay for the pizza, which is awesome. Uh, and they'll usually brag about how cool it is to work for them and how you can get involved as an intern and what they look for in interns when you're trying to settle up those, uh, those deals and stuff. So that's a huge part. I think that helped me a ton when I was uh, an undergrad or when I was an underclassman rather getting into that. So that's exciting. Um, and then third point's more of a fun one. We're here to make friends. We're hanging out. I didn't know any of these people before I started getting involved with the club and now they're like uh, all my best friends when it comes to cyber. So. Um, it's really awesome to have friends in different areas of the college, so we're hoping to be uh, that point of contact for cyber questions and Linux questions in general. As you know, we have a Linux help channel that's actually been pretty used so far, so that's awesome. Um, I don't want to say it's like a like knowing Linux is a requirement for anything, but um, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage if you come out of college and don't have like a pretty solid familiarity with uh, with basic Linux usage. So, yeah. It's a lot easier to learn from people that you're friends with and you can have casual conversations with. That's what I've, I feel like I've grown so much as a uh, student and a worker because I hang out here and just talk to people. So um, that falls into the CDF, CDCs and the stuff that we do outside of our normal meetings. So besides these, we'll hang out on weekends for doing those sort of challenges or we'll set up teams and stuff. So lots of, uh, lots of possibilities. If you can't make all the meetings, you can still be involved in the club, no problem. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. But so. Hopefully that makes sense. Those are my three pillars for why I'm justifying this club's existence, which I think is really important to do at the beginning of the year. So what do we do and don't we do? Um, I want to set some boundaries because obviously we can't do everything and we're not responsible for everything here at the university when it comes to cyber or computer or electrical or any of those engineering. So we're just going to talk about that real briefly. So like I said, company presentations, those are going to be a big thing for us in the weekly meetings. This will kind of be how it flows. So I'm going to announce the meeting topics every week in the Discord. Um, and then you can just decide if you want to come or not. There's no dues, there's no required meetings, none of that stuff. So if a talk sounds interesting to you, like something you want to learn more about, show up, we'll uh, talk about it. It's usually 45 minutes to an hour of the presentation. And then afterwards, the cabinet and everybody will just hang out and shoot the shit and talk about whatever we want to talk about. Maybe it's related to the topic, maybe it's not, um, whatever it is. So 
That will be, um, that's more the peer presentation side of things. Um, at the beginning here, we're looking to do intro to basic stuff. Um, a little bit later in the presentation, I'm gonna take kind of polls from you guys to figure out where we're at for knowledge levels and uh, years in school and stuff like that, just so we can tailor the club to um, whoever we have in the audience here, which is awesome. Um, we talked about interesting tools we found. I know James said he was working on a, or he got to work with a cool new, um, was it log aggregation stuff? Whatever you're talking about, yeah. Some blue team stuff that I don't have a ton of experience with as I was doing red teaming stuff all summer. So we try to present on new tools and applications that we've learned, things that we can at least uh, hopefully have you guys get like, know what the name is and then know what it does because that's pretty much all companies care about and then they can teach you how to actually use the tools as long as you know what they are. Um, and then we also accept a, a lot of presentations from students. I'm gonna be presenting a lot just because I'm president and when I can't fill in a company's presentation, I'll fall back on one of mine. So um, that's all, I put those on my blog, I put my blog on my website, I note that I've presented, it looks great uh, on a resume. Um, from here on out, you might see that cough, cough, resume, cough, cough thing show up on other slides. Um, I'm not gonna acknowledge it every time, but a lot of this club is really good on resumes. Um, a lot of things that we do is really good. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit more, but those are kind of what we do when we have these sort of presentations, when it's just us up here hanging out. They're gonna be pretty, form pretty informal talks about whatever pops into one of our heads for the week. Interesting text and things like that. I already talked a little bit about the company presentations, um, but yeah, we're gonna have a lot of companies come in. They're gonna give us usually real world demonstrations of exploits, vulnerabilities, and um, techniques that they're using every day at work for whether it's offensive stuff breaking into companies or if it's defensive stuff like, um, yeah, like I keep saying, IDS systems or new ways to detect malware, vulnerability or incident response, stuff like that. So we cover a wide range of different things for the company and then most importantly, internship discussions. Um, and then CTF and CDC, CDC prep, uh, we'll have those meetings coming up. Um, I'll announce when those are gonna be around. We, uh, on top of the CTFs that we participate as a club and set up teams for, we also um, host our own CTF in October, Spooky CTF. That one's on campus, and I would really, really, really encourage everybody to try it out. If you, even if by the time we get there, you have zero experience with CTFs, it's in person. All the challenges are made by the cabinet members and anybody else who wants to submit a challenge. So they literally can't be that hard because we are not that good at doing that stuff. So um, it's a very beginner-friendly CTF. And it's in person. And we almost get zero chances to do CTS in person, so we have lock picking challenges. We'll have like challenges where you have to get out of handcuffs. We'll do, um, I mean, cabling? what? Uh, Ethernet cabling or 345? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll do, you have to make your own Ethernet cable to connect to stuff. Uh, a whole bunch of fun physical challenges that you're not able to do over the, uh, on the internet. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when it comes up. But, uh, that one's a ton of fun. And then the CDCs. So while we do not run or organize or do anything technical with the CDCs, we will raise awareness for them. So if anybody's heard about those or not, I'm gonna talk about them on the next slide, I think. We, um, we pretty much just help raise awareness for those. So those are our weekly meetings, what they can cover. Um, I'm gonna talk about Capture the Flags right now because I don't know who all knows Capture the Flags. But CTFs, Capture the Flag competitions, are really fun cyber competitions where you actually get to try out all the skills that you've been learning in 231 or through all the readings you've done on YouTube or hack the box stuff like that So basically the way that they work is there are companies that will set up big scoreboards with a ton of challenges on them and The challenges would be like break into this website uh, crack this encryption uh, Crack this password hash uh, Download this binary and reverse engineer, you know something about it to steal a flag and all of these challenges, once you solve them, you get a little flag, it's just a text string that says like flag, you win. And then you submit that to their scoreboard and you get points for it. And you put a team together and you compete in that. And so it's a really, really great way to legally test all the stuff that we learn about in classes because the one weird thing about cyber is that it's pretty hard to get experience sometimes because um, I'm gonna try, I need to phrase this pretty specifically. I cannot tell you to go and test out any company's thing without like explicit permission. I'm not saying none of us have ever done that or none of us have ever messed with websites and maybe broken stuff, but like don't do that unless you have written permission. I definitely have to say that in the context of the president of this club. So yeah, we have a ctftime.org uh, team. Uh, if anybody wants to write that down or go to that website, that has our team. We're pseudo pseudo. We sign up for a lot of competitions. Uh, I just had to throw the screenshot in there. We do brag a little bit. We were 752nd out of like, oh no, that's right. We were 79th in the country for CTF teams last year. We actually participated in a lot of CTFs um, and did all right in some of them. We won some shirts. We won a t-shirt one time, which was cool. So maybe free swag if you do, enough. But yeah, so um, while I'm here, uh, show of hands, who has heard of CTFs before, before this competition? Sweet. 
That's like a lot of people. Awesome. Who is here to be interested in CTFs? Like they want to try one out or do more here while they're at the college? Awesome. That's super great to hear. It sounds like we might be making a couple teams for things. So uh, that's on Zach to start uh, looking at CTFs. So we'll probably, probably not do one this weekend just because it's Labor Day and I don't know what people's schedules are like. But next weekend, the next weekend, we usually do them. They're like Friday, Saturday, Sunday usually. So uh, next weekend, we might look at getting set one up. Uh, we usually reserve a room in the Student Innovation Center, and then we all just kind of pack into one room, and we have somebody who's working on an interesting challenge share their screen on a projector, and everybody just kind of crowds around and learns. So again, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we actually get CTF scheduled, but they're like, we try to have them as beginner friendly as possible, because I understand that it's not super common for people to come in with experience in them. So um, we're going to have like real easy walkthroughs of stuff. And actually, at the end of this, if we have time, we have some CTF challenges that we have up on our website that are kind of fun for anybody that has a laptop. So um, I think that's pretty much it. There's a Discord role selection. I want to talk about this because I don't know how many people saw it. Um, in the general chat of our Discord, there's a channel called role selection. You can go in there and click on the little flag emoji in the first message there, and it will give you the CTF role. And with that role, we can take, like if a new CTF yeah. announced, we'll take that. And eventually the CTF channels will be closed off to only people with that role. Yeah. So we're just trying to keep the Discord clean. We have a whole section of channels called CTF, which are dedicated to participating, helping out, posting write-ups, all that stuff for CTFs. So uh, I would recommend getting set up with that tag in the Discord. And then, yeah, when a new CTF comes around, we can just ping at CTF instead of at general so we don't have to annoy everybody. But so I wanted to point that out. Um, and yeah, so we're mostly going to be helping form teams and trying to do that. Oh, yeah, notice that cough, cough resume. Um, I, on my resume, I still have like some of the CTFs I participated in with the club, and it looks great. I can tell you I pretty much got my internship from CTFs because I helped to set up CTF training for the company that I worked at last summer. Yeah, no, it's no joke. Like the stuff we do here is like exactly what companies are looking at for cyber training to prove that you're like, you know, they they're cool seeing like that you took CPRE 230, 231, 331, whatever. But um, you know, showing the ambition and drive to go out of your way to do some of these fun events and learn while you're doing them is what companies are really looking for, so. Sweet. Cyber defense competitions, who, so CTFs are pretty popular. Who's here has heard of the cyber defense competitions on campus? Still a good amount of people, awesome. Um, has anybody here participated in a CDC before? Some of the high school ones, college ones, doesn't matter. Okay, so less people, um, I'll quote. So I just want to clarify this right now, CTFs, the CDCs are not run by us as a club, they're run by Ice Age, which is technically the same club, but um, we don't consider them the same club, so. They're run by them. We don't run them. We don't organize them. We don't run any of the technical stuff. So if something's down, um, you can ask, you can tell us and we'll just tell somebody else, but we don't actually run that. So um, what we do is we keep you guys informed about when the competitions are. Didn't somebody say, Tyler, when was the CDC? Do you remember? Um, October 14th to 15th. 14th to 15th will be uh, ISU 1, which is the first CDC for the collegiate students here. Um, you have about a month before that where the, uh, we'll announce when the scenario is released, hopefully a month. I'm holding you to that. It better be a month because you need a month. So, um, for anybody that yeah, doesn't know, <laughs> you can also do it the night before. You can also like most So, uh, for anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, CDCs, the cyber defense competitions, are we uh, students get into groups, into teams of like I don't know eight or ten or something, and you go and you have about a month, a month out from the competition date, you get a bunch of VMs. So it's like five, six, seven, eight VMs. And all those VMs have specific roles. So there's like a web server, a user management server, a database server, um, you know, like a work computer or something, a bunch of different computers. And it's your job to network them together in the most secure way possible so that they can also still perform all the roles they need to. So like obviously a website needs to be accessible from the internet so people can actually access it. And like a workstation, you need to be able to log in with valid credentials for an employee and stuff like that. So, um, you have about a month to set all that up and tie it all together, make it as secure as possible. And at the end of that month, everybody piles into the TLA over there, over right there, that way. Uh, everybody piles into the TLA and a bunch of professional pen testers from the area, from RSM, PwC, um, all these places around here, Collins Aerospace. They come in, sit in that room right over that way, one of the other classrooms, and uh, they spend a day just uh, 
breaking everything that you've worked for, everything that you've built up, everything you thought was really good, uh, they tear it apart piece by piece and you have to respond to that. So you sit in the TLA and you're on your computer watching what happens and you're saying, oh, they took a flag off of this machine. How did they do it? You go back, look at logs, figure it out, oh, we left a default password on this thing. And then you do a little write up to show what you did wrong, how they got in and how you would remediate it. And then you get points back for that. So. It's a big uh, push and pull thing. Uh, the students always lose because it's not the point of having the students win. It's the point of, of, of uh, having people break in and learn. So uh, yeah, you're not supposed to win. It doesn't matter really who wins. I've never had a company ask me who won in the CDC or if I won or whatever. Um, but I have put the CDCs on my resume for the past three years. And the CDCs plus the CTF plus coming in and presenting here, I have those three things easily got my first internship uh, doing consulting work in Des Moines at RSM. Like there was no doubt about it. Those, those three things stood out um, above and beyond all the normal classwork that we're doing here. So if anybody has any questions about CDCs, uh, we're gonna be hanging out, but those are like, I would say like probably the most important thing to be involved in here. They're, they're hard to get into. We try to, have, we try to help, we'll have beginner nights, we'll have nights where we talk about how you log into the VMs and how you change default passwords and all this stuff and best practices that we've learned over the years. But um, no, my first two CDCs I did as a freshman, I think the first one I only logged into my server. Like I just, I just opened the VM and was like, neat, I don't know what this is. And then I closed it and moved on and then did, didn't go to the competition. Uh, and then my second CDC, I think I logged in and I changed some passwords and we finished like not last, which was pretty cool. So uh, you got to set your expectations low for your first CDCs. But again, we're here to help put together teams. We'll help you meet new people because it's also hard to find teams that are looking for uh, people with zero experience. So we put those together and it's super fun. I would highly recommend everybody getting involved with the CDCs when those come around. So uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, survey time. So I wanted to talk a little bit about, I wanted, I wanted to take some note and uh, just mental notes and maybe actual physical notes of what we're looking at for like who you guys are, who, uh, what experiences you guys have. Because the other thing that I didn't mention and why this club exists is we want to make sure that this is as tailored to you guys as possible. So um, we're here to support the cybersecurity community at Iowa State in general. And if this is the semester that we have a ton of people who are like, I need to learn how to use Splunk, I guess we're gonna dive into Splunk more because we don't talk about that a ton, but we can. So uh, I don't really remember what I wrote here, so let's see. Uh, familiarity with Linux. Give me a yes, no, or like I've seen it before, sort of where we're at with Linux. Because we're probably, okay. So a good amount of people are in the, in the yes to medium range, which is sweet. One through five. One through five. With fingers? Yeah. <laughs> one through five with fingers. One, I don't know what Linux is. Five, I only use Linux and Windows is like the worst thing in the world uh, and anything in between. Yeah, I knew you'd have five. Uh, okay, well, that was about as helpful as the show of hands, so cool, cool. <laughs> but sweet, so we'll probably do, um, most people will probably do an intro to Linux night or at least intro to Kali Linux um, because Kali Linux and Parrot, so I, I, I daily drive Parrot OS on my laptop um, it's like a slightly different version of Kali. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Kali at some point, but it comes pre-installed with all of the tools that you'll ever need as a cybersecurity professional. So um, over the summer at my internship, I literally use Kali 24-7 for all my work every day. So we'll probably do an intro to just Kali in general, maybe installing it on a VM because we know there's a lot of people who only have Windows laptops and maybe aren't ready to dual boot it. So um, setting up VMs is the next best thing. So um, we'll probably do an intro, intro to Linux thing, which is cool. WSL. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna do, there'll probably be one meeting. We'll do a thing where we set up a VM for Linux and then also WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux, which is like probably the absolute easiest way to get Linux experience without having to commit to like changing your desktop to Arch and breaking everything. Also so. great for company computers because they usually don't have that completely locked down. So when I needed to use uh, Linux for Ansible mm -hmm. deployments, I just used WSL. Yeah, who's heard of WSL as a thing? Probably less people, less people, okay, sweet. Yeah, so it just lets you use uh, different flavors of Linux on Windows without any big hassle. It's awesome, so, cool. What else did I write? Have you participated, oh, I already, shit, I already kind of did this one. Uh, we don't really have to do that one again. We, wow. uh, awesome. wait, I lost my, that was a weird paint over. <laughs> I lost my thing, uh, okay, cool. So, um, I'm putting in my notes lots of people interested in CTFs, because that's not, that hasn't been the, uh, like, Damn it. Anybody know where my, there it is. There you go. Cool.
Oh, major. Okay, so let's see. Show of hands for dedicated cybersecurity majors. Cool. That's what we like to see. I don't want to gatekeep, but that's. I mean, we're that, that's what we like to see. So, uh, cool. <laughs> do uh, let's do something like really crazy. Let's do something stupid like comp size. Anybody a comp size? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. <laughs> that is unfortunate. That's scary. Okay, of those people, how many of you have a cybersecurity minor or are going for that? Yeah. What's the minor breakdown? Okay, so some just pure comp side people, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, you guys should have seen the the absolute uh, like hell fest we had last year trying to let this kid on the cabinet being a comp sci major, but yeah, there were like <laughs> he got I think all the votes. I think he got every yeah, I think everybody yeah. voted for him. So um, <laughs> all the uh, cabinet members and seniors that were there yeah, yeah voted for him. So but yeah, no problem. Precedent's been set now. We have to let comp sci people in. Unfortunate. Um, <laughs> let's go computer engineering, which was going to be my major for a long time. That's what I like to see. Cool, we got a computer engineering wing of people. Uh, any software engineers? More people? Sweet. Uh, of those people, software or computer, who's getting a minor, a cyber minor? Less people. That's fine. Cool. Yeah. So, like I said, we're trying to be as open as possible. So, we definitely do not lock this down to just cyber majors or just anything. Um, at Clubfest, I've talked to journalism majors who wanted to stop by and just be able to understand cyber better so they could write about it. Um, I've talked to bio majors and LAS and a bunch of stuff, a, a bunch of different. Um, people from different colleges and majors and stuff, and I feel like everybody should have at least a good understanding of cyber. That's why I think the beginning part of this club is so important. We're gonna go over intro stuff that might be review for a lot of people, but it's gonna allow us to go into some of those more complex topics later without having people who just completely, you know, get nothing out of the presentations. So that's more or less what we're trying to do, so cool, cool, cool. Uh, might as well do years, so let's hear seniors. Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. Cool number of seniors. Uh, we'll go juniors next. We'll just go down the line. Sweet. Oh, juniors. Uh, mixing up freshmen. Nice. A good amount of freshmen. That's that's sweet, sweet, sweet. That's when I got involved with the club, and then I fell off because of COVID. So we're back. Uh, and then sophomores, which I skipped over for no reason. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, grad students. Anybody not? In either of those four? High schoolers. Anybody that's not supposed to be here? <laughs> Actually, I don't know. You could probably show up as a high schooler. I'm not going to, I'm not IDing anybody. So, um, if you have uh, siblings who are high schoolers, <laughs> feel free to bring them in. I'll tone back the language. Um, all right, I'll say mostly freshmen. <laughs> probably mostly freshmen. Yes. freshmen there's definitely not that many seniors. I'll do freshman social. It doesn't. It literally doesn't matter. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this information. I <laughs> no juniors. Uh, okay. Oh, this one's. I think this one was loaded. Uh, <laughs> show of hands. Who's ever installed a skeleton key on a domain controller after having created a golden ticket through the combination of Kerberos roasting and password cracking? So I would not expect any hands. I literally, also, I have not done that. Um, but I did have a reason for throwing this up here, and these are some of the buzzwords that I hope to have people know about at the end of this. So this is a valid attack path for somebody that's uh, good or bad inside of a Windows environment directly. Um, curb roasting is a great way of getting a foothold on a Windows environment, or by privilege, uh, privilege escalation if it's really poorly set up. Curb roasting goes into, pa or into password cracking when you take it offline. If you crack the right password, you can create a golden ticket, and then you're really in business in, a in an Active Directory domain, and then that would let you throw up a skeleton key on the domain controller, and then that's just kind of a dick move. But people do it, so um, either way, not gonna explain all these buzzwords, but these are all things that I have talked through in interviews. So uh, the last company that I interviewed with had like four rounds of technical, technical interviews. Um, and they asked me about all of this. They asked me about golden tickets. What's the difference between a golden ticket and a silver ticket? Um, why are you able to curb roast certain accounts? Why do you want to curb roast a, a user account versus a computer account? Why can't you curb roast the KRGBTBT, KRBTGT account on all domain controllers? So, yeah, that's kind of a meme question, and I want to spend anybody to get it, but it is important to highlight that these are things that I want you guys to learn and be able to talk about at least, even if you don't get hands-on experience doing these attacks, because honestly, it's kind of hard. You have to set up a home lab and have a, have a lot of uh, resources to play with, but it is good to know all these things because they will come up in interviews if you're looking to go into a technical, like, red team style uh, position with cyber. So. And a quick plug for the YouTube, even if we don't end up covering this, there are some videos up on our YouTube, which we should probably put in the Discord. Uh, yeah, we need to make a links channel, a yeah. channel for just all of our links for 
Slack and everything. Yeah, they put that in the welcome and all. Are you thinking his previous talks? Uh, I double checked and I believe they go back to like 2013. Um, so that's uh, a lot of old stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me see here. Um, What's our website? I get up. No, I don't know the website. I know the website that we had before Ice Age broke everything. Of course. Yeah, I got the GitHub.io thing. So um, that's really it for my survey questions and the presentation as a whole. So, um, God damn it. Well, I don't know, but I don't, I don't run these present presentations. We're good. So uh, for anybody that hasn't seen, this is our website. It's uh, nice and dated, really cool. Um, definitely looks like some elite hackers made this website and definitely didn't pick the first template on GitHub pages that didn't look like ass. So um, yeah, we post a lot of stuff here, but um, oh, I also wanted to do a quick rundown of the Discord for anybody that's not in the Discord yet, because there's a couple things. We keep changing stuff and I mean to make, make, uh, make announcements and stuff, but so. This is the ISG Discord that everybody, I hope, is in. Uh, when you jump in, you're gonna get a landing page and you're gonna get a welcome page. There's a weird number of people here who are unverified. So if you join the Discord, you're gonna only have access to these two channels. And if you're unverified and not a bot, if you join this and you're a bot, don't do this. Like, stop listening to what I'm saying right now if you're a bot. Um, if you're not a bot, join this channel, you'll be in it, and just click the pumpkin. The pumpkin's gonna let you do everything else. So I don't want anybody to be sitting in the Discord and being like, why is nobody talking? Where's all the people? Uh, Cause yeah, if, you just, if you're just joining the Discord and you have this unverified role, you need to verify yourself, CAPTCHA, because we have a permanent link to joining our Discord on the Wild Wild West internet. So we wanna make sure we're not getting any bots or spammers like that one person. Raise your hand if you accidentally logged into a computer in Bayer Hall and sent like a billion messages. Okay, <laughs> that's funny. That was really weird. We really need to go look into that. Sorry for aggressively banning you. <laughs> we do. <laughs> we did auto ban you, but you're back, so that's cool. So there's something weird. If anybody who raise your hand if you've gone to the Bayer Hall like esports thing and like logged into a computer there. Not yet. No. Yeah, maybe on. maybe hold off on logging in there. Because <laughs> apparently. Back and take that. It's, it's good now. It's okay. good now. Okay. Damn. We were going to go on that, but yeah, I was talking, we were talking, and uh, apparently those computers have had some malicious programs on there that if you logged into a Discord, it would spam like every channel you were in and every DM with a spammy, uh, like scummy Discord link, and maybe it was key logging a bunch of stuff. So uh, we as the cabinet kind of want to go check that out and see what's up with that and maybe make a presentation out of it because it sounds super yeah, interesting. Who's in general? Yeah, who's in general? I'm not gonna join it, I almost did. So yeah, uh, that was one pitch. Make sure, that, I just wanna make sure everybody knows how that works because I don't want anybody sitting in there all semester and being like, why did I miss all the meetings? Um, other than that, pretty much all the normal stuff is in here, sans the cabinet channel, I don't know what I can say. Um, so main, throw whatever you want in there. We have now not one, but two meme joke channels, so that's sweet. Actively making a links channel for all of our stuff. And then this is the CTF part. Oh, and the only other thing is role selection. So. This is where we're going to be having our roles. I can already see this number has gone up by like 10 or 15 people since we started, which is awesome. So if you, we'll probably have more of these as we start to need more roles if we need them. Um, right now, the only one you guys need to be concerned about is this CTF. Oh my God. Claire, stop it. <laughs> um, but so this will be the only thing that we're looking at is having these flags to make sure we know who is part of the CTF team so we can just ping people that are, are specifically interested. So. That's cool. These other ones are for if you graduate or if you drop out, I guess. I 